I am headed to upstate New York to go see an old friend, Jimmy DiResta. Uh, Jimmy is a maker, which means he is somebody who can, well, just that, he can pretty much make anything, and he has over the years. Uh, with us, he's done a couple projects. He did a dining table made out of spalted maple. We also worked on a, a beautiful epoxy end table with some small round wood cutoffs. Also, uh, some channel letters with marquee lights, and he worked with Tommy once. They welded a coat rack together. But it's been a couple years since we've worked with Jimmy. Uh, he's got a brand new workshop, and he was kind enough to invite us up. He says he's got a new project he wants to try out. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting up there and see what he's got in store. Hey, Jimmy. How are you, buddy? Oh, good. Good to see you again. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Great to be back. Thank you. Been a while. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah. So what have you been up to? A lot of changes, a lot of good stuff. You know, I did a Netflix show. I saw it. Making fun? Making fun. It was a ridiculous show. It's a whole different side of you. Yeah, it was fun. Giving the kids a little bit of a... Uh, yeah. 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 The best part about that show was that we used my property. We used the, the shop, yeah. which you haven't had a chance to see yet. We did all the crazy stuff in the backyard. And most of those ideas came directly from the kids. I remember when that started going up, so I do want to check it out. Yeah, we'll go take a look. But I see a couple new ones, too. A peak of a, what do you, another one down there, a barn? Uh, building a horse barn. I started that a few years ago. It's still in progress. In, a lot of work. Everything's in progress. The new shop, I'd love to check that out. So maybe yeah. a tour from you? Of... Yeah, let's go take a look. All right. I good. think you'll like it. Last time I was here, the siding was going up, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. You said Dave was doing the yeah, siding Yeah, David was here, and he was banging it out. Yep. A lot more has happened since. A lot more. Oh yeah, this has come a long way. It has, Holy doesn't it? Mackerel. A lot of work. Yeah. This stained glass was a prop for the TV show. That's uh, a replica of the little one that was hanging over the old shop. That's right, that's right. Oh yeah, look what you have done here. Holy, the space. Isn't it nice? It is. I love it. And the stuff. I like you, having cool stuff around. Did you make or did you find? Me and my buddy Wesley made that for a YouTube video about a year and a half ago. That's awesome. Yeah. We made some channel letters, you and I, back in the day, much yes. smaller than, than yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you got a ton of space, and you bring people here, right? Because you're doing classes. We do and... classes. I bring friends together. We do maker sessions. This it's is a lot of fun. A lot, yeah. a lot of room, a lot of resources. A maker's mecca. I love it. Okay. It is, it is. So what do you think are you going to do with me? Well, I think we should do a leather project, and I broke out some leather to show you. I've never worked in leather, I'll be honest with you. It's a lot easier than a lot of people think. It's kind of intimidating. I think it was sort of a refined material or skill. Well, a lot, a lot like fine woodworking, people get nervous to cut into that beautiful, expensive piece of material. And so it's intimidating if you've never done it before, but it's very simple. So if this is the material, what do we actually work with? Are these the tools? These are your basic, simple tools to do mostly any leatherworking project. We have your, our stitch fork, which creates the holes where our stitching's gonna go. And we have our razor blade. Yeah. Needle and thread. Yeah, that's pretty simple right there. And your mallet to nail your stitch forks in. And just the divider so we could mark from the edge of our cut piece. Well, I'm a little less intimidated seeing the tools because they seem pretty basic. They're basic. This is all you really need to get started with any leather project. All right. Uh, what are you thinking? Well, I got some inspiration here. These are some bags that I've made over the years. This is a no-stitch bag. It's just rivets. All things oh. held together with rivets. So just press those in there. This one's a little more complicated, done with a sewing machine. Complicated one. Lots of nice detail. We're not going to tackle that today, are we? No. The simple project we're going to do today, we're going to copy this bag. Classic tote bag. Perfect. Tote, canvas. We're going to make it in leather. We're going to take this basic shape. We're going to hand stitch it together in leather. Okay. Listen, if you're willing to teach, I'm willing to learn. All right. You might lose some leather in the process, but... No, we won't lose anything. We just got to make a paper pattern on this to start. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. All right. This is our bag. We're going to use this bag as our inspiration, and we need to make a paper pattern first. And obviously in paper, because we refined it in paper before we cut any leather. Exactly. I'll just do a couple of quick little bits of tape to keep it together. So then we have our little leather shopping bag at the moment. Right. All right, this is a very hardy piece of leather. It's gonna make for a pretty bag. We're gonna have to wrestle it around a little bit, it's so thick. Backside, front side, doesn't this, matter. This is what's gonna show. This is what's gonna show. Yeah, so this is what's gonna be inside. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Okay, now with this paper pattern, we're just gonna gently trace it. And then we'll freehand razor blade it out. Mm -hmm. 
start to get a sense of the shape that's coming our way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I said, I could skive this, but I'll see what, what kind of bends I can get without skiving it. Because leather is very pliable. That's cool. That's coming together. So once we stitch this side, this triangle is going to fold up to create that corner, but we might have to skive it so it folds up a little bit easier. Boy, it's stiff enough. It actually works like wood. Yeah. So now what we need to do is establish our stitch line. You see the tiny line that it impresses in the surface there? Yep, just a scribe. Just a little scratch. Boy, it is subtle. Yeah. This will give us a nice, consistent, parallel line to our stitch edge. But when we're about to use the stitching fork, we establish our hole. And you see how deep we got to go through to get there. That's a punch all the way through. And so we stay on our line, but we leave the last fork into the last previous hole. That's how we maintain the consistency. our consistency. Interesting. If it were thinner, would you always use a fork or could you just push the needle through? Oh, no. Only Rambo can push the needle through. Okay. <laughs> and there we go. And so now I know my hole consistency in that spacing, I should land with the exact same number of holes. So if there's 100 holes there, there'll be 100 holes there. Now I'm not punching. This is something I often do too. I don't punch all the way through right away. Set them up, make the line. Yep, and this way I don't have to focus on my next pass. I know exactly where I, where I need to land. So now we want to establish our stitch coming up the side. We'll do a an X pattern, so there'll be like an X across. And I'll show you how we do that. Okay. Give me that black thread. Special thread or no? This is a wax thread, so it is a leather wax thread. It's super strong. Okay, so we are establishing our first stitch. You see we go through and through. Yep. It gets a little awkward, but once you start establishing your, your stitch, everything comes together. So in this case, the one that came out of the right is going back through the one on the left. Yep. And then vice versa. Yep. And that's your cross. Yep. So you can see why a high-end bag or something mm -hmm. like that, a person would come in and inspect the stitching, and really look oh, at yeah. it and see how precise and... Yeah, take a close look at certain stitches on. I mean, I think they're still overpriced, but you could see why. To tie off the end, I go back down the stitch pattern a couple of holes. A little reinforcement? Yeah, just to reinforce that end. And then we'll, we'll tie it off inside down the line a little bit. So that should be good. And then I might later on put a dab of glue on there just yeah. to keep that from coming undone. Well, what do you say, Jim? You gonna let me jump in there? You think you got it? Well, it's, I, we'll see. We're gonna find out together, but I'll give yeah. it a try. Very good. Sort of like lace in the shoes. Yep. Going through the punch hole is easy. Coming back out of it is the hard part. Because they're not very easy to see from the inside out. Because right. the inside of this leather is furry. Yep. So it hides all those holes. OK, so we got both of our stitches up on the side. You did a really beautiful job there. <laughs> You're being kind. No, 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 you did. But you see how you catch a rhythm? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a little, it's a little wear and tear on your fingertips, but you get used to it. And now we're going to fold this corner up and stitch that. So now that that's ready to go, I'm going to pull that up tight like that, and then I have a, an awl on the drill. Oh, look at that. So it's, it's almost like an extended um, needle. Yeah, and we're just going to start putting some holes. So it is very simple to do, but it takes a lot of patience, as you yeah. see. Yeah, you kind of got to get into the zone. 
I think if I took it up, the ladies in my family would be bringing me dinner in the garage because they'd never want me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be like, make me another bag, Dad. It's really accessible to most people because I've seen friends get into leather work for the first time ever, and then all of a sudden they're selling bags right away because they might have a unique spin or a, sp a unique approach to it. The creativity from your painting or your pottery exactly. might translate into your leather work. Exactly. Okay, so those knots that I tied, to ensure they won't come undone, I put a little bit of PVA glue on them, and that'll ensure that those knots won't become undone. I like it. So I have a bottle of Edge Coat. That's to finish the edge here. Did you ever get a fancy wallet, and the wallet has a darker edge? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's cool. actually a good match. And now we're going to cut handles. What do we think? We like? I do like. Seems like it's about the right length. Let could see. Feels good? Yeah. Okay, all of our edge coat is dry. Time to put on the handles with the rivets. Mm -hmm. There's our hole. Wow. And now we want to punch the hole in the bag. Hmm. Now these little saddle rivets are really good looking and they work really well. It bangs it down like that. Makes it tight. Makes it tight. They cut off whatever we don't need. You have the honors. Good. Okay, done. Nice fine touch. What do you think? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank Look you at very that much. Thing. Yeah. Material is great. I mean, the details, the stitching, it's all just beautiful. What do you think? You think you can handle it? I, now? Absolutely. It's like a lot easier than it seems, right? It is. It really is. The material works well. The tools are simple. And I, see, it's not going to look like this the first time I do it, but... It might. You see how forgiving the material is. And like I said before, it's just going to get better looking with age. Yeah. One last thing. This is my maker's mark oh. that I put on all my leather products. Ah, I came yes. out there. Yes. Ah, oh, worthy of that name right there. Thank you very much. That looks terrific. I like yeah. it a lot. Thank you. I came out good that one. Nice job, man. Hey, thanks for having us. Always good to be here. Thank you so much for coming back. I'm honored. Yeah, really. well, we'll come back anytime, brother. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that's it for us. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Jimmy DiResta. For Ask This Old House here in the DiResta <laughs> Workshop. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.